Hello, historians. This is Mr. Fredo. Today, very excited to talk about the next step in our study of the Age of Exploration, the technology that was used that actually allowed people to explore. Last episode, we talked about motivations, those great desires. The reality is you can have all the desire in the world. If you don't have the technology to actually make it a reality, it doesn't do you a whole lot of good. Like you could really want to build a deck at your house, but if you only have straws and glue sticks, you're not going to get very far. So it starts with kind of the idea and the desire, but it really is made possible by the technology that was available. So today, a real quick snapshot at some of the different forms of technology or the different types of creations that were developed during this time period, during the age of exploration, that actually allowed this to happen. And we start with a school, not necessarily a tool, but more of a system for creating explorers. Prince Henry was a leader in Portugal, and he comes up with the idea of founding a school, a center for higher learning, like a university today, that is exclusively dedicated towards creating and generating explorers. So anything you would have needed, anything at all, to be able to go out on the high seas, on the open seas, and successfully explore and find a new route or a new territory, you would learn at the school, whether it was actually sailing, charting ideas, repairing a ship, calculating uh, wind currents or uh, wind patterns or water currents, whatever you needed to do, you were able to learn at Prince Henry's Navigation School. And it's not an accident that Portugal really takes an early lead in the age of exploration and that most of the European countries around them were in the process of trying to catch up and keep up with Portugal. A lot of it has to do with this great school that Prince Henry created. Next big creation is the Caravel. Prior to the Caravel, the most common ship that was used uh, was called a galleon. It's very, very big, two to three times the size of a caravel. And it's not as if galleons went out of style, but they were very big, so that meant they were slower, they were harder to manipulate, and because they had that really, really deep bottom of their ship, they couldn't get very close to the shore. The caravel is really the exact opposite of that. It's very light, it's easier to control, it's extremely fast, at least in comparison to the galleon, and it also has a shallow bottom, where it, which means it's not cutting deep into the ocean. So what this allows the explorers to do is to get up along the coast, and they can actually sail along the coast uh, without having to get out of their ship and leave. They can explore without having to lose any time, and they can figure out whether a territory is safe or not, or worthy of them actually disembarking their ship and, and um, going on land. Next, we have the astrolabe, which is like the compass on steroids. The astrolabe has a ton of different functions, and specifically, we want to focus on the mariners or the sailors astrolabe. But the big game changer with the astrolabe is using this device, you would be able to calculate your position. If you were able to align this on the horizon, uh, find the moon or find the north star, whatever it was, whatever your line of demarcation was, you could actually determine your line of latitude and determine your distance north or south of the equator. It was essentially like having GPS in your hands. Imagine how powerful of a tool that would be to be able to determine in 1500 CE exactly where you were out in that great big ocean uh, without any of the semblance of technology that we have today. This is a real game changer because it gives them live reports on where they're actually at. Next, we have better maps. Here's a map from the Greek era, and you can see it's actually pretty impressive. The size of Africa, uh, all the different islands and peninsulas of Western Europe, the size of Asia. But you notice that some things are missing. Number one, half of the world is missing. Number two, uh, the detail is not very, not very good in comparison to what's created. Because of some of these explorations, by the 1600s and all the information that was brought back, these are what maps actually look like throughout Western Europe. And an accurate map, a detailed map, uh, would be one of the most expensive items anybody could ever purchase because you were holding the access to information that could get you to one of these places that could either make you famous or bring you uh, great wealth. And lastly, we have European technology. Some of this isn't really new technology, but the key point in understanding the role of weapons in the age of exploration as a form of technology is it's their guns, it's their cannons, and it's even their horses that allow them not really to travel, but to actually keep land upon arriving it. Remember, there are natives there. These territories, North America, South America, they're not uninhabited. There's people there, and usually outnumbering the Europeans in a great way. 
So for the Europeans, their greatest asset, in addition to the diseases they were unknowingly carrying, in terms of being able to actually take and conquer a territory, is the weapons that they had.